LakelandCarKeys.com. I'm currently sitting in a 2017 uh, Subaru Impreza, which is an all keys lost situation. We already went ahead and uh, cut a new transponder chip key. So this key, there's two different possibilities for the transponder. There's a G chip and an H chip. Uh, I tried the G chip originally. Um, and the programmer told me it couldn't communicate with the transponder. It couldn't, you know, whatever. It gave me some, some error code. So I went ahead and uh, set it up for an H chip, and I'm trying to program it. So right now I'm using the Autel KM100, and it, the process it has me uh, backing up the EEPROM data, and then once I back up the EEPROM data, what it's going to do is it's going to use the antenna as an analog key to send out the chip signal and I would have to turn the key blade and use the antenna as the key signal for the for the first key and then it, the process will be like I'm adding a key so what I do is I uh, let the car recognize this as one of the pre previously programmed keys and then when the programmer tells me, I'll put my new chip up and uh, program that chip to the key. And the car should start. This is my first time ever going through this particular process. So, you know, wish me luck. Hopefully this is uh, pretty simple. This is what we do on a lot of the newer Toyotas. Uh, we back up the EEPROM data. And this is, you know, anyone considering getting an Autel KM100. This is why I tell them, you know, it's a great tool to have because one, there's no subscription until it has the built-in ABP 112. Now, if I was going to use my Autel IM508, I would need a separate unit to do what this unit's going to do. All right, so we're just about, uh, I'm going to go ahead and save that as Subaru EEPROM. All right. So what I got to do now is I got to take this chip out, I mean, take the key out, remove the chip, and then try to use this. So right now it's set up as an analog key. And let's see what it does. All right, so I ended up having to switch keys. So uh, I had to get an H chip key, which the other key I had was different. So this is the one where it's going to have us... Uh, turn one key without a chip and then use use the KM5 um, excuse me the KM100 as an analog key where it'll pick it up and basically it'll be like an added key where we can go ahead and uh, use this right next to it it'll recognize uh, one of the previously programmed keys and then allow us to stick our, our new key in and continue to program it alright so now that I have the analog key generated I backed out and I went back into add a key and it says this functions for adding the key a working the key is needed for this function to continue I'm gonna hit yes all right it says insert uh, learn key and turn on the ignition all right now it says please use the key that are not learned to turn on the ignition so I'm going to take the chipless key out, put our new H chip in, and turn it to the on position. Alright, and now it tells me the number of keys reach the maximum can't learn more. So that's something new. I think there's three keys in there, so... I don't know if it's going to allow me to erase one key and then add this key in, but uh, as of right now, it's not letting me uh, add the key in. And as you can see, the lock is still flashing. So I went into the erase key function, and it says this function is for clearing other keys. Retain the current key. Do you want to continue? So basically what I think it's going to do is it's going to erase the other two keys and whatever uh, key the analog key is set for will stay in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. 
insert the key to be retained and turn the ignition on. All right. All right, clearance was successful. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. And then go back into add a key. All right. This function is for adding key. And we're gonna hit yes. Insert learn key and turn ignition on. All right, so I might have to shut it off and start over. All right, so, okay. All right. All right. So now I'm gonna go back and try the add a key one more time. It's kind of hard trying to do this one-handed. Give me, all right. So we're gonna hit yes to continue. I'll start the learn key and I'll turn the ignition on. Okay. All right. All right, so I don't know what keys it, uh, it erased and what keys it left but it, it is saying that one key is still in the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and uh, try to read the emo data and see if it'll let me back it up again. And uh, that way, when I set the analog key, I'll be on the right key and we'll go ahead and add a key in. All right, so I'm on the last couple of seconds. Uh, backing up the EEPROM data again and this is what we'll use to uh, set the analog key so that way we you know we're not trying to use keys that uh, we have erased out of the system all right all data saved successfully all right so now it's burning the firmware to make uh, the K100 analog key and now we are in analog key mode, so I'm going to back up. Why did it say generate failed? <sighs> All right. Let me try to set this key again. So I'm going to hit yes that I already have the data. Select EPROM3 that we just saved. Generate analog key is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then, so what I'm going to do here now is back out. Go to add a key. This function is for add a key. So I'm going to turn our unchip key off. Get it close to there. I'm going to hit yes. All right. Hit OK. All right, so now it's telling us to put our unlearn key in. So I'm going to turn that off. Put our new H chip key in. Turn it on. All right, so it tells me this key has already been registered in the current system. Please prepare unregistered key. All right. I don't know if the first time we tried programming it, it, uh... It messed up the key, but oh, this is great. Well, well, I don't know. The immobilizer light has gone out. So this car has a bad head gasket and I can't actually try to start it, but it looks like this key actually programmed. So what I'm gonna do now let's go back and read the number of keys and it still only telling me one key is in the system so I'm not 100% sure all right so if I put the unchip key back in we see that immobilizer light comes on I put the new key in 
turn it on the immobilizer light does, does not come on I'm going to chalk this up as a success it does crank over but like I said this this particular vehicle does not run all right so that that's another one uh, 2019 excuse me 2017 uh, Subaru Impreza it's an H key uh, the program procedure is going to for all keys loss is going to require you to back up the EEPROM data which you could do by OBDD uh, create an uh, analog key and then uh, add your key in using the add a key feature now if there's already three keys in the system apparently it told me three keys is the max so I had to erase all the keys that were in there and go back in and uh, do the add a key again all right thanks for watching lakelandcarkeys.com